iteration and loops in JavaScript for absolute beginners. So it's common in any program to need to do the same thing over and over and over again. What we don't want to do is repeatedly write, is to write the same code over and over and over again. That would be really dumb. So loops are the solution to this problem. So I'm going to start by declaring a simple array. And what I want to know is I want it to do something to each thing in the array. So I'm going to have Russell with two L's. I'm going to have Bob. And I'm going to have Sally. And something wrong with my syntax there. What have I done? Um, I've got, oh, there we go. My array missed the equals out. OK, my array equals Russell, Bob, Sally. So what if I want to console log each of them, or I want to make a big long string that's got all of them in, and I can, you know, do something like console log. This is, this is not the way to do it. This is the way to not do it. <laughs> so I could go console log element zero. I could log element one. And I could log element two. And so there we go. It's going to spit out Russell, Bob, Sally. What if I've got another friend? What if this other friend um, is called Sarah. Well, hang on a minute. I've got to write another console log now. I've got, to, I've got to take this and I've got to do my array and I've got to do three. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be console logging it in a real program for users. It would be spitting something out to the screen for them to, you know, on their website or app. Um, but you'd still have to write that code out. This is where loops come into play. So let's get rid of this console log completely and let's write. What is the most complicated loop? But if you understand this loop, then all the other loops are just easier ways of, of writing the complicated one. So it's called four because we're essentially saying do this for this number of times. So the basic syntax is it looks like that. And whatever goes in between the curly brackets is going to be console logged. So it's going to, it's going to be executed and we're going to console log. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable called i. It's going to equal zero. What that means is, well, i stands for iteration. I'm, I'm using i for iteration. That's going to be a counter for how many times our loop has run. So i equals zero. How many times do I want i to run? Well, I want it to run four times. But remember, um, so i is less than four. But we're starting to count at zero. So if i is less than four, there's going to be zero, one, two, three, which is four things, four times. Each time the loop iterates, we want to add one to the loop. So one to i, so that, so that we're counting the fact that it's increasing. And then here, I'm going to console log. And I'm going to console log the loop ran. So I should see the loop run appear four times. There we go, four times, perfect. So we have our first loop. So let's just understand the bit on the bit between line three and five. They're going to happen for as many times as we specified on line three. We start counting at zero. We're going to we're going to loop while the counter is less than four. But each time we run the loop, we're going to add one to the counter. If we don't add one to the counter, what's going to happen? The loop is going to run forever and ever and ever. Um, so if I did that, if this will even compile, OK, this is the rest of the video. We're just going to watch the loop run. So that, that, that's continuously going up the screen um, in an infinite loop, which interestingly, infinite loop avenue is the road which Apple's headquarters is on. One assumes that some software developer considered it humorous. Um, I don't know who, but you know, there's probably some interesting story that you can find on the internet. But we want to console log the names. So we want to console log my array. But which array element do we want to, do we want to console log? Well, it just so happens that our array has an index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Our loop has a iteration. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what if we put i in there? Then that is going to spit out 
each element of the array. Oh, if I put the plus plus back in there, <laughs> otherwise it will it will go on forever. So there you go, Russell, Bob, Sally, Sarah. Genius. This, it is to some degree genius, but it's not the best loop that we could possibly have. So what happens if I have another friend? Okay, let's say this one is going to be Kim. Um, and I console log again. Russell, Bob, Sally, Sarah, where's Kim? Well, my loop is only going four times. I need it to go five times. But that's not nice because what it what what happens if I add more people to the array? I've then got to add, I've then got to change my loop. What if we made the loop configure itself automatically based on the length of the array? So in instead of saying instead of hard coding five, what if I wrote my array dot length? because the array has a length and we can get that length from the array. So this array now is gonna automatically configure itself. Russell, Bob, Sarah, Sally, Kim. And if I had another friend on there, Lisa, I am going to, I get Russell, Bob, Sally, Sarah, Kim, Lisa. So I have a loop which configures itself to run as many times as the um, data that it's ultimately iterating over, which is infinitely clever. So that is the proper way in which you should write a loop. So this type of loop is completely flexible um, in that we can, we can just, I mean, I can just say, okay, I'm gonna write in here 500, and I'm just wanting to loop 500 times. Okay, <laughs> obviously there aren't 500 things in there, so it's saying they're undefined, um, but, this for loop is the most flexible, do whatever it is you need to do loop. There are less flexible ones. There are ones that are designed for specific scenarios. We're just going to touch on a couple of them. Um, so again, we're going to write for this one. We're going to write, I'm going to write item of my array. And here I'm going to console ooh, dot log. And I'm going to console log x. Oh, sorry, I'm going to console log item. Right. So let's uh, let's get back onto the console and let's just run that. You see, Russell, Bob, Sally, Sarah, Kim, and Lisa. Why is that better? Well, there's less code to write. What that's doing is it's like abstraction for the loop that we just wrote. So you can call this for, and then what it's going to do is underneath it's going to go and figure out how many things there are, and it's going to it's going to do its own count and it's going to define the, the, the iterable counter all underneath the surface. So this is a more concise syntax. Um, it's abstraction on top of, a, you know, a conventional loop. Item could be anything. I, I mean, some people would put item, some people would put X. X just represents each thing in the array. So it says, take the first thing, call it X, give it, give it the for loop as X. So on line four, when I'm accessing X, I'm accessing Russell, then Bob, then Sally, then Sarah, then Kim, then Lisa. And that's why it's spitting out one after the other um, in the way that it is. But you could imagine that those don't those array elements don't have to be strings. They could be objects or other arrays or anything. So it could be something like x.name if, if, if each one was an object and it, and it had a name property. Um, so this sort of loop, it's quicker and easier to write, but it will always loop for the number of items in the array, which you might not always want. Um, and this can only be used in things that, that, can be it, that are what's called iterable. So the other iterable is an object, which I'm sure you may have guessed. So I'm gonna call this my object. Let me just scrap all that. Um, and let's go my object equals new object. And let's have name going to be Russell and age is going to be 39. Right. OK, so let me just spit that out. Oh, my array is not the OK because I changed it to my object. Ah, that, that technically classifies as a bug. Uh, my object is not iterable. It is iterable. For... X, oh, sorry, my typo, it's in. Okay, 
So when we're working on an, when we're iterating over an object, we're looking at things that are in the object. So because an array is like, is a list of things, we can iterate, we can iterate over it. Um, an object contains things for iterating over the things that are inside it. That's, that's my best explanation. Um, but yeah, my little keyword change and suddenly the whole thing breaks. So there you go, name and age. So it's spitting each one out. So I can have name and then I will have uh, my object if I want the actual thing inside it. Like so, there you go, Russell 39. So I'm saying, give me, because X is, think of X is the, X is the key. So it's saying my object, this is the key, spit out the value that's inside it. There are other sorts of loops, there's other ways of writing them. Um, personally, I'd always write a full blown for loop because it's most flexible, uh, but some people have their own um, personal preferences. Next, we're going to look at try, catch and errors.